Let's get it. Grant Flanders and Matt Hall are at Tallgrass Tap House in Manhattan, Kansas on points on a Thursday night. <laughs> it's 7 o'clock exactly as I looked at my, my clock. If somebody's listening to this right now, there's no chance at 7 o'clock unless, <laughs> unless it's tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. That could happen. It's possible. It would be a really cool thing. If that happened, maybe go to the message board and send us a little note on uh-huh. Twitter because I hope that happened to somebody. Yep. But anyway... Flando, we're going to talk hoops today, you and me, because that's what we usually yep. talk about, um, amongst other things. How you doing today? How you I'm feeling? good. I'm good. I mean, you sound sh- you sound better. Uh, you know, I had, a, I had some sicknesses, some yeah. things going on. You know, know, that really caused some congestion. I think it's getting better. You yeah. know, even though it's f- f- like seven degrees outside. Yeah. You know, oh. I do think the weather. I've looked at some some future forecasts, and it looks like to be getting better in the next few days, but. Boy, it was cold, cold today out there. But you know what, Flando? They don't tune in to the KSO show presented <laughs> by a number of places. You hear about the State weather? Bank, correct. <laughs> um, Legacy Insurance Solutions, Tallgrass Tap House, Harry's, Bourbon and Baker. Walk. I parked in front of Bourbon and Baker today. The last 39 editions of the KSO show on Thursday night, I've been had to park over at the mall and walk over here. I stopped even trying to go over by the front. Yep. Tonight there was one spot. I parked there in front of Bourbon and Baker. I was so excited, and then I thought, boy. We should have gone to Bourbon and Baker. I, well, that's a great place next too. week. Yeah, maybe next week you should know. be, and maybe yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Anyway, uh, they didn't hear. They didn't want to hear about that. Do they nope. want to hear though. Do they want to hear about how you're like an opposite of an alcoholic. Probably. <laughs> I, well, real fast. Real fast. So, um, Flando and I decided. You know, uh, he'll usually him and Fan and whoever's else will usually have a beer while we're on the on the pod and. And I will too. I'm not. I'm absolutely not above it. I just yeah. haven't had a beer for a while. It's and been then, ah, so I, long since yeah. I've seen you drink a beer. And then we, I said, hey, you ordered one, and I said, man, I feel like I'm in a good, happy mood tonight. I'm going to get one and you know celebrate it with you. And then I had one <laughs> sip, and I said, hey, man, <laughs> well, I know you can have you can have mine. So I'm sure that's really going to. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm sure that's really going to make you relatable to the listeners. <laughs> I don't really like to taste the beer right now. I'm appreciative. <laughs> hey, they're going to like the juxtaposition from their life. <laughs> what the heck are you? Let's get going. That's a great word, though. So what I've done, I've written down 10 uh, statements. That, these are not specifically taken from anywhere. I didn't see these and say, oh, someone said that, so I'm going to steal it. But these are 10 things that I think could easily show up on our message board, could show up on Twitter, could show up on the talk radio and discussion. And I'm going to say them. We'll alternate. We'll both, we're both going to answer every one of them yep. and just have a conversation yep. about it. But I'll go first on ha- I'll go first on the even numbers. She'll go first on the odd numbers, and then we could still fight back and forth or discuss. My dad used to say "cuss and discuss." He probably still says it, um, but that's what he Wait, used yeah, to say. Yeah, we might not be able to do that too much. No, on the case. just maybe discuss. We could probably can cuss once at each other. Backs, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to say a sentence now, Flando. You're going to need to listen specifically okay. because some, you know, because depending on if you hear a word or two wrong, uh-huh. it could totally change the meaning of the statement. Okay. And if I think you're crazy, I'll just say, hey, are you sure? <laughs> okay, number one, K-State won't win at least two more games this season. So, you know, you pulled the schedule. This is a conversation. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's fine with me. I, I, I looked at the schedule the, a little bit ago. The statement is but K-State will not win. Uh, I guess the best way, they won't win two more games this year. So if they win more than two, yeah, you could be a jerk and say, technical, they didn't win two, they won four. That's not the point of the question or point of the question. It's will K-State win two more games this year? I talk talk through. I, 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 I don't thinking. think so. I really don't think so. I mean, I, yeah, let's talk through it. Yeah. I mean, this weekend we have TCU. Right. I, I see a loss there. Right. The next game after that's at Texas Tech. Lost there. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the the best one is after that, you have Texas at home. That's right. your best chance. And, I mean, either that or Iowa State down the road. And I don't see – I see them maybe getting one of those. Yeah. But not both. So, I'll say no. Yeah, I, I, I probably agree. Now, I know they just lost to them at home, Oklahoma State. But I would I would throw they that one be in. Able, yep. You know, there's They'll probably 14 – there. Uh, at TCU, at Oklahoma State, Texas at home – and I would say at, at home, or the four that I would look at and say, "Hey, you know, those are more or less toss-ups." I'm yep. sure that K-State will be an underdog, and like you know, this weekend against TCU, and probably at Oklahoma State, maybe even home against Texas, but you know, it'll be close. So, so I think you're saying, "Hey, well, can they go two and two in those games?" Um, I'll be optimistic and say yes that I think K-State will win two more games this year, but I don't feel great about it. Um, it's, it's, it's that's sad. That's I mean, that's the conversation. Yeah, you know? yeah. I you know you're, there's, not, you're not crazy to well, say no either. Well, I, 
I know there's people out there that believe that K-State won't win another game. When you have a performance right. like that against a bottom feeder team in the Big 12 at home, right. like Oklahoma State, that's the last game that you just saw. Yeah, it's going to stick in your mind that can they get a win down the road? Yeah, I agree. I think they get one. I mean, twos, yeah, it's it's a, it's a toss-up, really, yeah. because every game from here on out, it's like I, I'm going to be picking against them just because how they've gone this right. year. No, that makes sense to me. I'm going to move to number two, which makes me go first because two is an even number. Yep. Um, Bruce Weber's job should be safe regardless what happens the rest of the season. To me, this is a very easy answer. I just brought it up to discuss yeah. it. Um, the, to me, it's yes. They don't. They could lose out, and his job would be safe, in my opinion. And the reason I bring this up too, to, to the to credit of people who, I don't want to call, I don't want to label people as anti Bruce or pro Bruce. That's not my point. The people who would probably tell you they're not big fans of him, even them on the board and on Twitter, aren't saying things like he's really got to go this year. Um, I think people even even the most you know, disagreeable yep. as far yep. as Bruce. I understand this isn't really a question, but I think it needs to be said um, because there will be a person or two who says, well, if they lose out, you got to fire him. And I understand that emotional reaction, but it would it's never going to happen, for one. It's not even worth considering because yep. there's no chance of it. Maybe, I don't know what he would do with his own career. You know what I mean, about retirement yeah. or that kind of stuff. I don't expect him to at all. Long story short, my answer is no matter what happens, yes, his job is safe. I agree with you. I mean, 100%, like, what he's done throughout his years here, being able to... The fact that they've had a lower low than this season, in my opinion, based on the blow-up they had with Marcus Foster yeah. and that whole squad. Record-wise may not be lower, but yes. it still felt. But as yes. the culture went, everything went, how the program felt like it was going, yeah, it felt lower. He was able to pull them out of that, still get a Big 12 championship that just happened last year. And, yes, now you lose the three big contributors from that, bringing in three more that are freshmen to try to see what can happen. And then on top of that, four more after that just to see what's going to happen. And, yeah, to me, on the recruiting trail, what he's been able to do on the court as well, one bad year is not enough. And even next year, I will say if they had the same year, sure, there could be some questions like uh, maybe even the start of a hot seat if he has the same year this year as he does next right. year. But I don't I don't see them I agree improving that. all of a sudden to number two in the league, three in the league, maybe middle but of the pack. Can't, they can't go 11 and 17 again. Exactly. I mean, yeah, you'd be better than that. Do, yeah, yeah, exactly. And but, not one game better. We both, we both not, not to keep interrupting yep. you, but we're not saying 12 and 16 is good enough. They would need to be a unarguably better team you know, record-wise for everything next year. Absolutely, yeah, because yeah, this year it's like, I mean, NIT's out of the question right. at this point, you know? So, yeah, I mean, next year you have to at least be in the NIT talk, if not bubble talk and stuff like that. Yep. But, yeah. No, I'm with you. The only thing I've seen, and again, I've seen most people would be pretty, I think, reasonable. I hate to use that word even because it's suggesting what I think is reasonable, what they think isn't. That's not what I mean. But I think I've been pretty calm on that part of the topic. Yep. The thing I have seen a couple people say that I just don't get, and it makes me chuckle, I'll see the words written, well, I don't, I just don't have any reason to believe Bruce. I've literally seen written by, you know, people that Bruce could can get these young guys where we want them to be. And I think to myself, you can you can have any belief about Bruce Weber if you want. And, hey, I told you guys it was ridiculous they were picked ninth this year, and I was wrong because they're going to finish probably 10th. So I understand my yep. bias and my perspective yep. on this. That said, I don't understand that line of thinking because you just watched him do this. You just watched him take a program that had completely bottomed out, loaded it up with freshmen that he wanted, went to an Elite, yep. one, elite Eight, won a Big 12 title. Him doing that once is not a guarantee it'll happen again. He could fail with this next class. I'm not saying you're wrong, but to say you have no reason to believe or no, no hope when it yeah. just happened, as you just watched this process happen, that seems a little silly to me personally. Exactly. But hey, hey, they are what they are. They're, they're nine and yeah. what nine and fourteen basketball team who just lost back to back games yep. to, to what we thought were teams of Big Twelve. I understand the anger, I do, but some of the stuff still yeah. maybe a hair far. Yep, and I think I mean. Let me let me like, tell you. Instead, you let me give you number three okay. because this is yeah. on the same topic, yeah. Yeah. and I think we're going to stay on the same page uh -huh. where we're more or less like no. But number three, because I have seen this said, or at least suggested, uh -huh. some of this hypothetical. Well, Bruce Weber should be safe, and he is safe. But if I'm Gene Taylor, I'm telling him he's got to make at least one change to his assistant coaching staff. Not a specific name. I'm not asking you to name a name or that kind of stuff. The question is, is this: Do you even agree with that? You know, no, I, okay, I, I do don't not. either. But no, yeah, no, no, so, yeah. and tell me why, I guess, tell me why. And I agree with you. I'll go and give, spoil my answer. But if you're going to say no, not even that, why are you saying no to I that? I think right now they have the perfect combination of assistant coaches. Chester was a solid coach. No doubt he was. upgraded by getting Jermaine and what he's able to bring to the table based on the fact. I think recruiting. Re yeah. yeah. You got Celta Miguel, I mean, the yeah. best ranked player as far as next year's class goes, as far as rivals is concerned. Yep. And. To me, he's just more patient as Chester's. That's kind of the word I would say. But still, obviously, he was able to hit. He was able to get Celta Miguel, and I think that's a solid. And then Brad Corn's the guy that likes to get brought up a lot. Yep. He's just, you know, his name's just not out there as much just because 
you know, he's just a little, he moves a little quieter. Yeah. It doesn't mean he's not doing all the really good work that these other assistants are doing. Right. He's doing all of that. He's finding, I mean, I'm, we're still finding names from who he's recruiting. It might just sometimes be a it's different not as route. easy as, yeah. Exactly. So, to me, they're all, they all three have different things that they provide, but they're all solid recruiters. And I think solid in-game coaches, too. I know this year's tough for Jermaine just because he hasn't of course. been on the floor for a Big 12 championship, but I see the potential there. Yeah, I would agree. Um, and I bring this up just because I've seen this presented. And, again, I've seen it presented some credit. Any poster who feels like I'm singling them out, one, I'm not. But, two, I've seen it presented just as pure hypotheticals, too. I don't think the poster's saying this needs to happen. But, hey, if you're upset and you want to look for a solution, I think it was in a poll question I yeah. thought. It's like, hey, it's a reasonable thing to put on there. I don't agree with doing it. And my reason is the same as yours. And it's always the same reason as why Bruce Weber's safe for me. I can't turn around and tell the staff, you know, that – this is a bad, bad season, and yeah. it's not okay. I'm not trying to make it okay. And if this trend continued, it would not be okay. But I can't, in any line of work, look at a group of people and say, all right, you know, th- three years ago, NCAA tournament, two years ago, Elite Eight, last year, Big 12 championship. Oh, the class you have coming in for next year is the best we've signed here in the, since Michael B's the best you ever had. But you're bad right now. Fire one of your people. Oh my that's God. that's yeah. ridiculous. It is. If someone did that to me, I would quit. Yep. You know what yep. I mean? So that wouldn't happen. It won't happen. And I'm not saying you're dumb if you think nope. that. That's not what I'm trying to suggest. I'm just saying, one, why it won't happen, and two, why I personally and you personally don't, don't yep. think it should happen. Number four. And we didn't even bring up Lowry because, I mean, right. everyone loves Lowry. Right. We have to talk about Jermaine and Corn because, right. yeah, I mean, these guys, you don't hear about them as much because, yeah, we don't sit down and have videos like Correct. we have with Coach Lowry. But exactly right. It does not mean they're not we don't really like them. solid coaches. Yeah, we just, right. yeah. <laughs> that's, what it, that's what it is. Like, <laughs> now, number four, and I may, I, I may say the first negative thing here, like, and you may have to argue okay, with me, or you yeah. may agree. Number four, I wrote the statement that this freshman class right now, you know, Dejuan Gordon, Montavious Murphy, Antonio Gordon, has been good enough to inspire, I wrote the term, legitimate hope for next season. Now, we can argue about legitimate hope and what that is, and that can be good. But my answer is no. Okay. And I'm somebody – now, I don't think this class is underperformed. I don't think they've disappointed. That's not what I'm saying. But as I, but as I look at – here's my point, I guess. As I look at those three and I look at the team this year, the team this year is really bad right now. You know, mm-hmm. we, we would agree on that. The three best players on the team I, over the course of the season and for the last three, four, five games, you know, if you start breaking it down, in some order, are Cartier Jada, Xavier Sneed, and McCall Mowane, yep. or Mike McGurl. Mm-hmm. And number four is either McCall Mowane or Mike McGurl. My point is those three in a, on a really bad team aren't, to me, none of them are in the top three players on the roster. So I can't look at those three and say, man, they're so good. Or they're the best three players in this terrible team. Or looking at Culver at West Virginia last year and saying, yeah, they, they suck, but Culver's their best player and he's yep. great. I don't see any of that. Now, I'm not saying they can't be great, and I hope you tell me I'm wrong and you explain why I'm wrong. Yeah. But I don't think this freshman class has been so good that if I'm a K-State fan, I'm just giving Bruce or anybody yep. a pass and saying, yeah, it's a bad year, but next year with Dejuan and, and Monty as sophomores, they're going to the tournament. Because they might, but I don't think it's going to be because that freshman class is so great. I, I think I agree. Be, oh, it, you, well, it. I think I'm in yeah. the middle of yeah. where you're at because... You, you're not as confident in my stance I, as yes, I am. exactly. Yeah. Well, I guess... I mean, yeah, I know I've been high on Antonio. I'm not even going to talk about Antonio. That's the you only can. thing because he's, he's yeah. been bad. That's just, Lately. That's just what it yeah. is. Lately, he's just not been good. doesn't mean he can't turn it around in the future, but right, right. now it doesn't look like that's going to happen. The other two, yeah, it's tough because you saw more production out of freshman Barry Brown, freshman Cam Stokes, and even Dean Wade than you have yep. these guys. And I do believe Dean Wade is better than a Montavious Murphy. Right. And what Barry Brown did, that's going to be hard to duplicate for what Dan Swan's right. going to have to do. Those are good comparisons, though. Yeah. yeah. But so that's the one thing. I don't see them being as successful as those other guys, those freshmen that are those seniors that just left last year. But I guess where the hope does come from is the crop coming in next year right. to cultivate that and turn that into something. So when they are seniors and juniors, those other guys should be real deal ballers because that's the one thing I know it's in high school it's it's different I mean Dejuan blew up and he's right he could still be the best player on the team throughout the oh, rest and, of his and, time and he, he has been be, at yeah. times he had the West Virginia first half no you know doubt. 15 points five yeah he so I'm not trying to yep. and I know you're the same I'm not trying to dump yeah. on these guys I'm not I don't think they've disappointed I'm and I think you're on the same page yep. I'm just saying this class by itself is not yep. enough for you to say whoo thank goodness we're gonna be great the next three yep. years because of these three guys I do think you know? part of it is What's stunted? Maybe I know this is just all mm-hmm. you know. Po- this is a good podcast conversation. I right, love these questions right. you brought up because what it, what I think s- might stunt what Montavious and uh, uh, Dejuan have going right. is 
a lack of leadership compared to what those freshmen at well, first had in like a DJ Johnson and Wesley Wandu that are older guys and trying to, you know, no bring doubt you about it. And that too. And I, and I think if you were going to make an argument uh, about, you know, and you said it very well about, you know, hey, right now, yeah, I don't think Monty's projecting better than Dean. And as good as Dejuan, we think he's going to be, it's hard to say he's going to be better than Barry Brown, yep. who is one of the best. Yep. I don't want to put a number on it, but, you know, one of the best players in school history, yep. most accomplished at least. So it's fair to say that. But if you're going to argue back against it, yep. you know, those guys, despite having some other guys like you mentioned, they were almost immediately like, hey, your you're scoring options basically want, you know, and you're our top three scoring options if you're Cam, Dean, and Barry, or at least you're in the top four. Take all the shots you want, that kind of stuff. This group hasn't had that. Yep. Now, it's come on a little yep. bit more. Now, Monty and Dejuan are starting, mm-hmm. but they weren't handed the ball on day one and said, this is your program, yep. go do it. Because they still, that was still X's and Max and Cardi's and Mike's. So, and that's not criticizing any of those players. Yeah. That I'm saying, if you were going to argue, hey, even though Dejuan and Money don't look as good as Dean and Barry, they yep. could be because X, Y, and Z. And one of those things yep. is different expectations or things asked of them as yep. freshmen. Last thing I'll say on the topic is about the freshmen is, too, I mean, we're at the point in the season, and this is their first year playing. Yeah. They've had a lot of minutes, especially Monty and Dejuan. Yeah, it's starting to hit a wall at some no point doubt. that, you know, like it's tough to get up shots when you're that tired and that worn out. You, know? you asked so. in the last presser, and like every time you ask your question, and I love it, <laughs> Bruce, in a good way, does not let you finish it because he knows what you're asking and yep. that kind of thing. But you're like, hey, the freshman went one for two. He's like, yeah, they really, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I do feel like they've hit a wall. I mean, yep. it does feel like that way. Antonio, like we said, hey, and, I, and I've been critical of, it. I mean, of Antonio Gordon a little bit. He still has a future. He's still a long yep. guy who has shooting skills from the outside. He's going to develop physically, all that kind yep. of stuff. We're not trying to dismiss him. We're just being honest. He's not playing a lot of minutes yep. right now. He's not really a factor right mm-hmm. now. Um, but, I mean, you look at those other guys. Dejuan Gordon, I don't know how many games in a row he spins riding the bike for oh, I know. forever the before the game. To get, there, yeah. Well, yeah, the effort's there, but one, to get his and knee yeah. loosened up. Yep. So, obviously, he's yep. been dealing with some stuff. Coach Weber has said Monty Murphy's dealing with some stuff, too. And those, again, aren't excuses. Every player in the country is hurt. You know, every player on great team. Baylor has guys who's hurt, and they're fighting through it. That's not an excuse. But when you talk to your new freshman to this, your team's not doing great and you're hurt, it's not shocking that production can slip yep. a little bit. Number six, I'm going to answer first, and I wish I'd made you answer it first. I'm going to make you answer it Do first. It, yeah. And I'm going to take – I'll take the next one back uh-huh. from you or something like that. And, again, before you answer this, I am not – writing this in sharpie marker anywhere i'm not holding this to you this is just a fun prediction and i'm not going to give you crap for it down the line number six donovan williams will commit to kansas state what do you think about that statement yeah that's it's yeah it's a tough one i mean right where he's at right now i mean i can lay out everything that's going on and then i'll give you my prediction give yeah give us some yeah give us some stuff uh i guess i think it's like today or even maybe yesterday this Mm -hmm. week he's visiting Texas A&M. So yeah. that, that team is in the fold. Oklahoma right. State has offered since K-State's offered right. and since he's visited K-State. Yeah. Texas is in the fold. say Texas still is, right? Yep. Yeah. That's four teams. So we got K-State, Texas A&M, Texas, and Oklahoma State. Right. To me, K-State is at the top of the list right now. Right. I know it's funny, and I'm bringing this back up uh-huh, because uh-huh. the fact he wore a K-State sweatshirt, I'm going to keep a very close eye yeah. on that. I want to see pictures from this A&M else. visit yeah. to see if he wears an A&M sweatshirt or not. I think that could make a big, uh, a big, Maybe you know, a tell you thing. A telling, yeah. yeah, a telling thing. I'm going to say yes. He's you going yes. to commit to K-State. I think location is a factor. I think he wants to be close to his family. A lot. I, the one thing that, that worries me about his commitment is the poor season K-State's having because right. I do look at uh, Nebraska's poor season and they had he decommitted from there. So what is his mindset process there? But the Texas other teams is having a better season. Exactly. And, you know, Oklahoma State pretty similar. Yeah, I guess, similar. But whereas yeah. Texas is just a little yeah. bit better. Yeah. But probably that, at least more I guess if you're coach. looking, you know, positive, those teams aren't blowing case out exactly. of the water. Exactly. And A and M's not either. So right. yeah, to me, yeah, you're not. There's not like a clear cut, clear cut uh, person with the advantage or team with the advantage. But I do think K State right now is at the top of his list. But he's on a visit this week. We'll see if he right. changes his mind. And what well, see what you oh, did. Oh yeah, and mid April is when he wants to commit by. So well, we'll you, know by then. And I tell you, I will tell you what. I think about this today. Uh, if if he commits, I mean, we could be in Lincoln real fast. Yeah. Right. Oh, I mean, like, I mean, like real fast. Oh my so, God, that'd be the, and we certainly certainly that'd be the would closest be. Commit, I think. It'd be besides a Kansas behind, football, well, Kansas commit. Sam though, Shields. You know? Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> 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 I know. Yes, for or basketball. Yeah. I mean, for basketball. Is, is it? it? Yeah, it has to be. Anyway, yeah. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to just be a jerk now, and I listened to your answer, and I was letting it formulate my answer. I'm going to say no because here's what I heard you say without yep. you saying it. 
and I'm going to put words in your mouth, is you said you think K-State is the most likely individual school for Donovan Williams, but I didn't hear a guy confident that you would take K-State over the field, that I offered you K-State uh-huh. or Texas, Oklahoma State, A&M, and uh, yeah. you're a betting man. I think you're taking that Texas, Texas A&M, Oklahoma State one. I think you're right. So just from you know me nitpicking now the wording of the question, I'm going to say no because I think it's more likely he does not although I think K-State's the more likely, most likely individual school he commits to. I think you're spot and on. That's how you ride the fence, too, because then when he doesn't, I got to say, I told you I wasn't going to. And if he does, I'm like, well, K-State was the most likely <laughs> school. It's what I'm not doing that. It's what I honestly believe. That's, I, that is how I look at it. Uh-huh. And if I had a gun to my head, I would say no. You know he's not committing because I think it is more likely he goes somewhere else. Well, but, yeah. it's how I, but it is how I feel about it. That's how I, I, think, that's how I see I the mean, situation. It's tough. Look at, like, think of yourself in Donovan Williams' position and look at K-State's class. I mean, you yeah. already have – a number of really, you know, Celta Miguel, Nigel Pack, and Luke Kazuki in the class, all three that would be yeah. basically willing to do his position. I yeah. mean, Nigel, you know, is more of the pure point guard, but still a guard that, you know, you want to be able to be a good shooter and play some defense. Yep. And it's going to be tough to see if he's going to join up with the class. It could make it really strong. But that all, a lot at this stage in the game, though, a lot of teams have that. Oklahoma right. State, I mean, that I wouldn't Loaded. say he's going to go there. They have tons. Cunningham coming, you know. A lot of really good other guards coming in. Yeah. Rondell Walker and stuff like that. Yeah, so it'll be interesting. This stays on the recruiting uh, genre a little bit here. Number seven, I'll go first because I made you go first on mine. I wrote that two true freshmen, so so far that would include Nigel Pack, Davion Bradford, Luke Kasupke, Selton Miguel, not Donovan Williams yet. But, I mean, we they're probably going to take another true freshman, yep. whether it's you know Donovan Williams. Uh, and I don't know if the Kobe Clark train is whatever, yep. but let's just say they probably take another one. You know, player X, although not player X uh-huh. because that was our guy. Would Carlton Lingard count as this or uh, no, that's, no, that's but technically a juco. All right, all right, all right. Okay, no what? In, how about incoming recruits? First year, players. not yeah. yeah. But see, I have a the reason why I'm going back and forth with you is I have a Casey Izagu specific question. Yep. So okay, no, no, a, true freshman. Screw it, true yep. freshman is what freshman. it's going to be. Two true freshmen will start more than half of K State's games next season. I don't care a lot about the half designation. What I'm trying to get is will two true freshmen more or less become regular starters on the team next year? And I love that you're counting that on your fingers. I'm going to give you my answer, and then you can talk back to it. Yeah. I'm going to say no. I think one will. Hey, thank you so much. And that might be like Selton Miguel. You know, I could really see that happening. I love Nigel Pack, and I'm tempted to say Nigel Pack will too. We don't know what's going to happen with the roster around the guards, and that we'll get to that later too a little bit. But I'm thinking, man, I mean, if Sloan and Cardi and Mike yeah. are all back, he's not going to start half the games. I don't think Luke's going to start. You know, Davion we've heard a number of times. Like, he could be a – a dark horse possibly to start, even though that would surprise yep. some people because Bruce keeps talking about how, well, he's not going to be ready to play a bunch of minutes, and he's not, but I'm mumbling now. My answer is no because the only one I really believe and I'm willing to, like, you know, put my name behind is Selton Miguel. Yep. And so I say no. Well, I'm, I'm kind of on the same page as yeah. with you, but since you talked that out, you do have me wondering about Bradford because yeah. if somebody has if a Izyagu, big is going to have to yeah. start. If Iziagu right? looks like a guy that maybe you just – you know, want to have come off the bench as an energy, you know, right. defender. Use him when you want to use You're either him. starting him, Bradford, or Levi, yeah, right? Exactly. I mean, I mean, yeah, Carlton Lingard, of course, would be a, a different yep, situation. Yep. That would change the whole thing. But it's, from what we know, it's one of those yep. three, right? Yep. I mean. But I'm kind of with you. If I'm going to be betting my money on it, I think only one for more, for more than half the year because, yeah, I see them well, starting Mike. Now that I've said that, I mean, they could play Monty at the five, but I know you've gotten – it's pretty made pretty clear to you they see him as a four. They see him at the right. four, yeah, yeah, they do, they do. And they, that's why well, they, they – In theory, in theory yep. I guess, as I'm eliminating that, it's, yep. not, it's not impossible. Especially, I mean, right. with X gone, they can do small ball right. galore It's not year, impossible so, yeah. if they sign whatever they want to sign. This is just, you know, pie in the sky that they could start. Monty, Selton, Donovan Williams, Cardi if he's back, and Mike. Yep. You know, I'm just saying, like, that's – so when I keep saying it has to be one of those guys, I'm, I'm not – they would rather it wasn't Monty, but it could be. But I think I'm with you. I think they start someone that's not Monty. I mean, Monty will start at the four, and then they'll start either Zagu. I think it's going to be Zagu, and that's what my thing. I think my, my starting lineup right now would be Mike, David, Sloan, uh-huh. Mike. Yep. I, I, I'm not even going to put Cardi in there because I just you don't know so up back. in the air. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So Selton, Monty, and then Zagu. So you, yeah, I would say you said Sloan, Mike, Selton. Selton. No Dejuan well, Gordon. Gordon. That's yeah. the thing. So yeah. 
I forgot. Maybe, that's, I mean, now, maybe Selton will start. does it. Maybe Mike comes off the bench. Maybe so Dejan. maybe that's the thing is maybe Selton doesn't even start. I think there's a better chance that no freshman start than, than two, two freshmen. Start. That's a good answer, and I think you're yeah. right. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, number eight, we both pretty much ruined, which is fine. It, it's my <laughs> fault for putting in the order I have. Was was Casey Iziagu will start for K State at least half the time next season. We yep. both project yes yep. for this, right? And hey, I hear some groans, you know, through my radio yeah. ears here. Like I understand his UTEP line, and you're not wrong. You know, he did not dominate by any stretch at UTEP. He was behind other big guys there. He transferred away, and he's yep. redshirting. You know, so and he was going to redshirt there. Yep. I understand all of it. I I do. And he may not be very good. I understand all that. I'm just saying I'm going off of how he looks physically, which is different, yep. and what the coaches tell us behind the scenes yep. and in front of the scenes. I think he's going to be a nice player for them. I don't think he's going to be a star. I think he will start a number of games next year. A different little silver lining, too. Who we got? I mean, I think I put it in, you know, back when he committed and stuff. Yeah. But, like, he started like, – UTEP started to realize, oh, we need to go they, to this guy near the end did of the late. year. Yeah, he started in, like, the last Yeah, he started the last, that. like, 12 games or whatever like that. And – I mean, he's a defensive guy. He's going to be doing most of his work on that end. If he can get a little offensive game, he could be a huge asset. But even then, I think with the number of scores that they're going to have around him, they won't really ask him to do much as far as that goes. But uh, I still think I'd be groaning more if Levi was starting than Casey's Yago. Oh, I know you would. <laughs> no, we all know you would. I mean, no. Oh, we all sincerely actually love Levi. We've talked oh, about yeah, this before. Oh, yeah. I think Levi is a right. good guy. Yes, I do too. Um, I think he will. I think he will, though. I mean, I think that the, hope that I, the hope that I have for Yago is huge hands. Yep. And I hope that means, it's, you know, we all have criticized Mac for not catching the ball yep. very well, and it is what it is. I don't think Casey Yago is going to be nearly as skilled of a shooter as Mac is, and Mac yep. is a good shooter. Yeah. Um, he's not, not gonna that have, willing, though, either. Right, he's no, just, but I mean, still, yeah. but I mean, yeah. so he's not going to have that offensive game. I don't know if he'll be as good in the screen and roll game, but when he has a chance, I believe, to get off the boards and putbacks or lobs inside, he has a chance because of the, the sheer size of his hands, I think, to be better at catching the ball and finishing around the rim. And, uh, yeah, he's just going to be more aggressive in general, I think, too. I think he's just that kind of player than Mac is, too. Yeah. yeah. Ready? For number nine is maybe the hardest one yet and maybe our longest conversation. I don't even know my answer. Odds are me, you, me first. I you first. Remember, yeah. I, well, it's a tough one, so you can go first. All right, answer this however you want. We'll talk through it. Number nine, K-State needs Cartier Jada back next year. K-State needs Cartier Jada back next year. So you can talk through your thoughts, yeah, talk through whatever. Uh, no. You say no. Why, I say why no. no. Well, I'll, I'll say this before you answer, just so people know. I say yes. Okay. So we're going to have good. a good disagreement yes, here. It's going it. to be good. So let's hear you first, and I'll argue with I you. I say no. I still think without him, they can get into – it's going to be – it's not going to be a, a great, great season next year. It's going to be the same as what I was thinking before. Right. Because, I, I I mean, I'm on, I'm on the wagon of I kind of think and, he's out the door, you know. Yeah. So – Oh, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not saying. I know that's not part of the, like the the question, but I think that this the team next year without Cardi can maybe not get as far, but I still think they can get bubble conversation, NIT, which for me that's good enough for next year's team, knowing what the future will yeah. hold. Um, whereas Cardi, I think, yeah, I mean, it's devil's advocate because he could either be that that push that gets you to maybe top half of the league next right. year. And, and a nice little tournament spot, or I don't know, like he, he could flounder the season too. You never know with with right. his turnovers and how he he leads the team as the senior the senior leader. So, but I, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to say no. They don't need Cardi next well, year. Well, now I feel like I'm a little bit dumb because as I keep I, always, I pick on you all the time, you know, for the stuff like this. Like I wrote needs, yep. you know, I. I probably the answer to that is probably no, <laughs> as far as needs him, um, because to say needs we would have to know some things. You know, again, yeah. like it's going to be a great fit with the team. He's going to play really, really well, and he can help lead them. You know, to, to great things. And that's not about picking on Cartier Jada. That's for any player. Yep. If you need somebody, you're saying because they can do those things yep. for you. But my point is, I guess this, and it goes back to what I what I said earlier. I, I think it's better if you can get him back. Because, like I talked about earlier, I mean, any way you slice it, and even with his mistakes, and, yeah, I, I've been as hard on him as anybody for the turnovers. He had five more against Oklahoma State the other night, yeah. you know. Um, but he's still one of their three best players. Sometimes he's their best, you know, meaning, you know, K-State. Uh, I think he is their most skilled offensive player despite the mistakes. Um, and I, I fear 
how rough a season could be without, you know, any of those guys on the team next year. I also know in the back of my mind, it, it, everything you're saying, it, it may not matter. Like, And maybe it would be good just to say, and this is, again, this is not about Cardi. This is about maybe anybody who is coming off a senior year off this team or yep. whatever, you know, and just moving on to another era. Like, maybe there's value in saying, okay, Dejuan and Nigel Pack and Selton and Donovan Williams, and those are the guys, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I still think Cardi's, and I know you do too, I still think he's a very skilled player. Yep. I think he's a good kid. Yep. Um, and I, I would love to see him embrace a role where he's still – I think the number one offensive option on the yeah, team next absolutely. year, but but understands and is okay with not that and not that he's not okay with it, but that maybe Dejuan's the guy on the yep. team, you know, or maybe that kind of stuff. Or even and yeah, I tell you what, he's yep. been okay with it before. And some people say he couldn't be okay with it. He was okay with it when Barry was. He yeah. was okay when Cam was. He was cool. okay when Ned Dean was. Mm -hmm. They were older than him. Yes, I understand. He would be a senior giving that up to a freshman or whatever or a sophomore. Yep. But it could happen. I'm probably wrong. They don't need him. But I just want to make clear. I I think. K State's better off with a good Cartier Jada next year than without him, and yep. I'm sure you do think, too. Yeah, in that no, sense, I, yeah. Grand scheme of things, I, I do too. I, I think, you know, he does bring that. And two, I mean, like he went into the season saying like he would have no pro this season, he would have no problem playing off the ball. Right. So I, I I I do think that is still like part of his mindset, and it's starting to show a little bit more. He's right. willing to give David Sloan the ball, and now they're playing really more together too. More, trust know? him more. He's you know, yeah, exactly. Like, and next year, a whole year under David Sloan's belt, Cardi will have all the trust in the world. So, right. if that's a scenario, that could really be and a maybe nice he, scenario. Maybe he respects Nigel Pack as a ball handler and yep, as a player. Maybe he too. respects. And not, so, no matter and again, what, who's on I'm the I'm just going to yep. say something kind of harsh. I'm not saying things to hide between the lines. I'm not saying Cardi does it. It's because he's become the Cardi and Jada topics become such a ridiculous deal, in my opinion. You know, like I'm not saying anything tricky about about yep. him here. He does respect people right now. I'm just saying maybe he trusts and understands more. Hey. I believe Dejuan, or Dejuan's mm -hmm. not going to turn it over. I believe Sloan's not going to. I believe in this Pat kid. Not only do I want to play off the ball like I already did, I actually believe I can do it, and these guys are, are going yep. to control it. And that's a normal thought for anybody to have. Um, meaning to say, yes, I want to play off the ball, but I don't know if these guys who've never played in the Big 12 are going to be able to exactly. handle it for us. And yeah. his first like successful experience under K-State was playing solid point guard when Cam Stokes Correct. got injured. Right. And he had to come in and play the point. And he played it really well because that was his role. He wasn't he was feeding right. the guys. Right. So I think if he realizes is that, yeah, I can be the Barry Brown, I can be the the you know the Cam Stokes and play off the ball too, yep. it'd be fine. He has been put in a tough spot this year. As has if you want to frame this season around any individual player, whether it's Cartier Jada, Xavier Sneed, Mike McGurl, McCall McWayne, Levi Sockard, Pearson Mack, any one of them, we could we could make create a really good narrative about the bad situation they're in because it'd be true when the team's bad and then you focus exactly. it on any on any one person, yep. it's going to look bad yep. for them. So I know that's happened, and I, you know with Cardi this year, and I, and I feel I think you know, yeah, and I've been part of it too, and I've yeah. talked about. Yeah, I do think there's a chance, a good chance he's not back next year. Of course, I'm just saying like when we talk about him, we're talking about him because he's one of K State's best players, if not best players, that we think may not be back next year. So the discussion for us is interesting because. Do they need him back next year? Yep. Anyway, I'm going to move on to number 10, which is the last question in the most current. I wrote that K-State will lose to TCU on Saturday in Fort Worth. I'll let you go first. I think they do. Um, they lost in Bramlage, right? Correct. To TCU, yeah. Correct. So they've yeah, lost the last to TCU. Second, but they did. It was. Real yeah. close game. I think TCU's been – they've struggled as of late here yeah. and there. I mean, they lost to Oklahoma State. They're not playing very well right so, now. So, yeah, they're not playing great. But I think that's, that's where, like, both teams aren't playing great. I'll take the home team. That's I'm really gonna, where I'm at. I'm going to go Swerve City on you here, and Ooh. I think K-State's going to beat okay. TCU on Saturday despite how I hope bad K-State's playing. they do for you. You're going to be down there. I'm going to be down there, and I'll say this. I've been pretty accurate on K-State this year for the most part. I picked K-State to lose by five to Oklahoma State at home, and they did. So me going I, you know, me going and picking them to beat TCU yep. is not just me being a fun homer, you know, and yep. going that kind of stuff. I think K-State's in that spot right now, and it's not me passively criticizing the fan base. The team's really bad. I understand why Bramble isn't full. But when you're bad like this and people are mad at you, you're better off playing in an empty road environment yeah, where no one cares that's true. than playing at home when that's everyone there true. is kind of mad at you, uh -huh. you know? So I think playing at TCU in what will be a dead <laughs> silent environment in the Schulmeyer Arena, I think it's helpful for K-State. I think neither team's very good. I think K-State's going to probably bounce back off some really bad performances, make me think they've gotten better, and then it will be go back into a, a few-game drought for them. But I do think K-State beats TCU Saturday in Fort Worth. Well, I'm glad at least one of us are picking them. I mean, that's my yeah. thing. Yeah, I, I, no, so we you shouldn't. They'll be an underdog. You're not wrong to well, pick exactly. against them. Like, my, yeah. my answer from your first question, or I don't know if it's one of yeah. the first questions about 
how many more games are they really going to win? It's like, yeah, yeah they, if they win this one, then they're probably going to get to two, you know? Right, yeah. right, which is so, exciting. Yeah. <laughs> it really, really it's is. Really, yeah. um, That's what we have to look forward to. It is. We're going to wrap up this edition <laughs> of the KSO Show from Tallgrass Tap House on that note. Next week, I don't know the exact date, 19th, 20th, 20th, oh, yeah, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, it's like we're going to go to week. St. Louis back-to-back nights. We keep telling you to see Debbie on Bradford. I think it's Luke Kazuki Luke first. Not, Luke's responded to me. He's excited Luke for us first, to get out there. Yeah. I think Luke's first. DY is Either the one way. that looked up the dates. Either way, yeah, it's his fault. So yeah, back-to-back exactly. nights, <laughs> we'll see those. We'll have highlights, I'm sure. We'll have interviews yep. with them, I'm sure. So that'll be really, really uh-huh. fun. Of course, like you said, I'm going to go to Fort Worth by myself because I'm a great husband and it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> so I say, hey, Nats. <laughs> you could go down to Fort Worth with me in the car while I cover the TCU game. Oh, you know, you that'll be have a great. No, we're gonna have, we're gonna have a really good time. You know, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, so that'll be great. And we'll be back. I'll be back. We know with KSO today. No, you I'll were be doing tomorrow. it. Did you see Rango Jones's? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I responded yeah, yeah. to him. Okay. So okay. Yes, oh I yes. Yeah, yeah. You did. Okay. <laughs> so that'll be great. I look forward to that. And I guess I'm just gonna wrap it up because I'll just make you and say, hey, thanks for listening. Please tell your friends. Uh, Tell them, please.